Good evening, everybody. Our top stories. Florence makes landfall on the Carolina coast. Four people killed, hundreds stranded because of heavy flooding. And more than half a million people are without power tonight. We'll have live updates on the tropical storm's path throughout the hour. Also tonight, Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos has been attacking President Trump for years through his Washington Post. Now he's lashing out at the president for fighting back against fake news and those who fund it. It is a mistake for any elected official, in my opinion, to attack media and journalists. Um, I believe that it is an essential component of our democracy. We take up the president's battle with fake news and their corporate masters. Republican strategist Ed Rollins with us tonight. We take up the shocking evidence of left-wing political bias that Google can't credibly deny any longer. I think all of us would agree this election was particularly hard. There is a lot of fear. And so I think, I think it's important to reach out, be aware of that fear. Republican lawmakers now finally demanding answers about Google's left-wing corporate culture and Soviet-style efforts to silence conservatives. We begin tonight with what is now Tropical Storm Florence as it batters the Carolinas with heavy winds, heavy rain, and a deadly storm surge. Florence made landfall this morning near Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina, and since then has pounded the region, destroying buildings, causing major flooding, and cutting power to hundreds of thousands of homes and businesses. Four people have died as a result of this storm, including a mother and her infant child. Forecasters continue to warn of catastrophic flooding, that could last for days. Some coastal communities have already experienced up to 20 inches of rain, but as the storm slowly moves over the area this weekend, they could see as high as 40 inches of rain. Joining us tonight is Dan Bongino, former Secret Service agent, author of the book Spygate, the attempted sabotage of Donald J. Trump, available for pre-order now, we might point out, and we recommend it to you highly. Uh, Dan, good to have you with us. Let's start with, first of all, the preparations for the storm and already a, uh, if you will, kinetic political atmosphere that surrounds the storm. Uh, the left, uh, whether in the media or whether on Capitol Hill, preparing their attacks for President Trump and his government. Yeah, Lou, this is a new low. Uh, I mean, just when you think you've reached a bedrock of lows in politics, we crack through the bedrock and we move towards like the core of the depravity earth of pop. I mean, we're politicizing storm events now. This is so disturbing. And, and Lou, I, I have to tell you, I, I was glad to see you push back. Listen, let's just get it out there. There is no doubting, period, full stop, the tragic events that happened in Puerto Rico or the fact that people died and the event was an, a, a, a massive human tragedy. Everybody understands that. No doubt. But why was this information being released right before a hurricane made landfall in the Carolinas with a study that used a computer simulation? And we've never seen this before on a mass scale, this posting of fatalities after a hurricane. You have to ask yourself, why was this being done? Is it not a fair question for Donald Trump to, to, to fight back a bit and say, hey, we did what we could do with FEMA. It wasn't perfect, but I can't deliver these. Pro I'm a little fired up about this. I'm sorry if I'm going on a bit here. But what do you want Donald Trump to do? Deliver the water bottles himself and the supplies, Lou? I yeah. don't blame him for fighting back one bit. Yeah, I, I, I don't blame him either, but I do blame the national media uh, for not doing the job they are supposed to do, which is to examine and skeptically look at what is being reported, but instead uh, the left-wing media has become a herd that simply talks about 3,000 uh, deaths as if it were a fact. It's not only not a fact, it's not even reasonably based on fact or evidence, and, it, and there's absolutely uh, this only the scantest of mention the fact that these numbers come out a year after that tragic event in Puerto Rico. People died, people were killed. And the people who should, I, in my in my opinion, uh, be held accountable include the mayor of San Juan. They include the the governor of Puerto Rico. And what happened to all of the supplies that were delivered, 
And why is no one taking note that this president sent in military forces that stayed there longer than they've stayed on the scene of any other natural disaster in the country's history uh, and is not given credit for it? This is this Luke. is a sickness that has gripped the minds of the Jeff Bezos and others who control major fake news outlets. Lou, it's infuriating. And a basic internet search here, Lou, I'm not talking about advanced level investigative journalism here. A basic internet search of the local failures on the ground, the hoarding of rescue equipment, the hoarding of supplies, the water bottles left on the runway, the food rotting in warehouses, a basic internet search would show you that the United States government, although obviously not perfect in their response, did what they could do when there were epic logistical failures on the ground where the locals were. But right. instead of doing that basic internet search, it's more convenient for them to target Donald Trump. And Lou, one more thing on this sure. that's really bothering me. You know, I really get tired of these social media outrage campaigns all the time and these weak-kneed, spineless, jellyfish Republicans who jump right, right on the bandwagon and say, oh, yeah, that's right. You know what? Poor, uh, let's go after Trump should have never responded. No, he should have responded. The yeah, American absolutely people elected him because they're tired of phony media narratives and nonsense narratives put out there. And I'm, I'm really upset that people fall into this trap every time. It was a massive tragedy. Yeah. There's no doubt. Well, but I'm the gonna, effort by the media was not to get answers. Well, I'm going to name Trump. names. Rick Scott running for Senate in Florida uh, uh, and uh, Ron DeSantis uh, running for the governorship of Florida. Both instantly uh, took the side against the man who is pushing their candidacies uh, and without any reason, without any skeptical judgment, without any analysis, without knowledge of the facts, and sided with those who wanted to go with the highest number, irrespective of whether they were based in reality or fact or anything close to reason. They were not. They were extrapolations of the wildest form by two universities. I am sad to say Harvard University uh, and its, uh, public, uh, its public policy a school and and George Washington University and the Milken Institute. It, it, it's a disgrace what they did. They should be ashamed of themselves and they should be apologizing to the American public and the people of Puerto Rico who've had to go through this now again, the number of deaths and uh, without, again, evidence, without death certificates, without burials, uh, without a, any factual basis for an analysis of what is uh, Puerto Rico's, one of its greatest yeah. tragedies uh, in its history. It's a shame, as you say. Uh, turning to it the is. national media, Dan, uh, this president has had to fight fake news. Now comes Jeff Bezos again, uh, and the president and Bezos do not, I think it is safe to say, get along or share a worldview. But the, the fact is that Bezos is saying that presidents and governors should be uh, expect to be held to scrutiny what he does through his paper is subject this president to personal attack day in and day out, seven, eight articles uh, every single day attacking this president and his uh, administration. You know, uh, Lou, this is almost comical. Like, Bezos needs to look in the mirror. We just had a story today, although not Bezos' outlet, but the New York Times, a complete, utter fake news story implicating Nikki Haley in Curtain Gate, the purchase of <laughs> tens of thousands of dollars. In now, again, not the Washington right. Post, to be fair, but we've seen this in the Washington Post before, insinuations about collusion and other things. And again, it goes back to the prior story here, where prior weak need jelly fish Republicans with no spines would say, oh, hey, back off. Yeah. Don't fight people who buy ink by the barrel. The American people are tired of that. They're yeah. sick of it. They are happy that this guy, President Trump, goes out there and says, you know what? Nah, I'm not taking this crap. Fake news. Put a little fake news siren on it. Point it out and make them correct themselves. Bezos needs to look in the mirror. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And the president himself, uh, he knows what uh, the American people are thinking. He knows that they they get the joke and that they have had a belly full of this nonsense, whether it's coming from a Bezos outlet or, or a Carlos Slim outlet. Uh, the nonsense is uh, just about, I think, at a point where we're going to see a, a mass rejection of it. It's not working any longer on the American people. Dan, it's great to see you. Thanks for being with us. We appreciate it. Dan yes, Bongino. Sir. Good to see you, Lou.
Up next, Jeff Bezos says his Washington Post daily smear of the president is a healthy exercise for a democracy. If you're the president of the United States or a governor of a state or whatever, you, you don't take that job thinking you're not going to get scrutinized. You're going to get scrutinized. Really? Those look a lot like attacks to me, not scrutiny. But let's, uh, let's examine, well, closer the billionaire's paper and the smear jobs that are a daily affair. Next with us, the savant, Ed Rollins. We'll be right back. Stay with us. The billionaire owner of the, well, he's actually the richest person in the world, in fact, Jeff Bezos, the owner of the Washington Post, says President Trump should just accept the constant attacks from the Washington Post and the rest of the national left-wing media. What the president should say is, this is right, this is good, I'm glad I'm being scrutinized, but it's really dangerous to demonize the media, it's dangerous to call the media lowlifes, it's dangerous to say that they're the enemy of the people. Dangerous, he says, but isn't it dangerous to demonize the president and constantly attack him unfairly in many cases? But what about Barack Obama, who didn't get any scrutiny from the Washington Post that I recall, and they seem to have at the Post no problem in taking aim at a media uh, that President Obama doesn't agree with. We are going through this moment where the forces of retrenchment and backlash and, and, and anger are constantly being fanned. And we've got, frankly, some media outlets that like to do the fanning. Yeah, I, I, do you suppose it was the Washington Post he was thinking of there? The great divider himself, seemingly demonizing, even as he condemns the demonization of American politics. Uh, we should point out, President Obama went a long way toward advancing the cause of demonization. He also had this to say just last night. The biggest threat to our democracy is indifference. The biggest threat to our democracy is where you just turn away from politics and you stay home on election day. Remember that. That's the biggest enemy. A reminder, there are only 53 days remaining until the most important midterm elections in history. Ones uh, that will ensure President Trump's agenda uh, is allowed to continue. Before President Obama left office, you may remember, he said he would consider it a personal insult to him and his legacy, his big old legacy, if people didn't vote for Hillary Clinton. And we know they didn't vote for Hillary Clinton, not in the, uh, not in the numbers that he wanted. So we might make it a point again, <laughs> perhaps to insult the president's legacy and vote to continue to make America great again. Joining me now, Ed Rollins, chairman of the Great America PAC, Hall of Fame political consultant, Rollins serving as White House political director under President Reagan. Good to see you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Can you believe you've got a president of the United States having to listen to his predecessor criticize him? It's the first time in my memory or in my reading of history that this has ever occurred. Uh, it's certainly this. It's, uh, my, my history is the same as yours. It, it doesn't happen. It shouldn't happen. Uh, and it breaks all the promises that he I think the reality here is it's not going to have any impact, though. I, I think he could not produce for Hillary Clinton, uh, even among the African-American vote where he had record numbers. Uh, she was down 7 percent overall among African-Americans, and that's what probably cost her defeat. So he can't there's no evidence that he can produce uh, the vote for anybody but himself. Well, others. there is considerable evidence, though, that he can cost the Democrats a lot, uh, a, a lot of uh, seats. He cost them a thousand in state legislatures, right. governorships, I think it was uh, 12 governorships he cost them. Uh, uh, majorities in the Congress. It, it's, it, it's, it's stunning. Uh, the Republicans should be funding his uh, I could his not, I could not agree more. I, and as I said the other night on the show, the debate between Donald Trump's success in his economic policies and, and Obama's failures in economic policies is a great forum to go debate. And uh, if Democrats want to have Obama out front, have at it. That's not going to work. This is a, this Dan Bongino uh, brought up the the issue of uh, the New York Times story talking about fifty three thousand dollar curtains in Nikki Haley's office uh, put up a big picture of her. But they only made one little mistake. 
it was all money decided by President Obama's administration uh, and put up and ordered uh, by them, not her. It and took them all day to fix that story. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unfortunately, the damage, the damage is, there's no da real damage. There's no but, real damage. But the reality is the, the story got out that it was her fault and it was not her fault. So she, she, the president, the president pointing out uh, that uh, this is, uh, it, it took all this time for them to correct that story. His battle with fake news, Jeff Bezos talking about scrutiny. Jeff Bezos is, you know, he's a smart guy, but he's also too smart to be sitting there throwing a bunch of bull. Uh, uh, on the issue. He wants to attack this president. That's exactly what he's having his paper do, uh, the Washington Post. Uh, and uh, and pretending he isn't is, is dishonest, disingenuous at best. Well, he promised when he bought that paper that it was, he was going to make it into a great paper and it was going to be a great fair paper. Well, it's certainly not. It certainly, certainly is. Uh, I've been reading the Washington Post every day for 40 years because I lived in Washington for a long time. Uh, it's always been against Republicans. Uh, it's more so now than ever, though. It's it's ridiculous. And I think the great well, thing... Republicans, that, you know, in all respect, uh, this isn't about Republicans. This is about the President of the United States. Right. He's been attacking him and him personally. He doesn't attack Paul Ryan. He doesn't attack Mitch McConnell, the globalist little rhinos. Uh, they He attacks the man who took on the establishment, and that's President Donald J. You're, Trump. You're, you're absolutely correct. But I also concur uh, that Donald Trump is the Republican Party today, whether Ryan or any of them like it or not. He is the Republican Party. No, I'm talking about just vis-a-vis -vis right. Jeff Bezos and his right. Uh, paper. Right. Well, this, the, the truth of the matter is the president has, has tagged them as fake news and the vast majority of Americans now are beginning to feel What like are we going to see happen here? We've got uh, this, this guy, Ryan. Uh, he looks like he's going to be trouble right to the last day that uh, uh, and he's probably going to pitch a tent on Capitol Hill once he leaves the <laughs> speaker's office. Uh, well, why anybody listens to him is beyond me. His, his premise of, of, of uh, altering the, the budgetary diet uh, by changing... The same his... reason they listened to McCain. They listened to, to the old Lindsey Graham because they were anti-Republican. That's why they listened to him, I, the I, national... But I'm media. saying Republicans should not be listening to him. Republicans need to be out there running on Trump. I say that over and over and over again. And the reality is Donald Trump has 90 percent plus of Republican support. Uh, he basically had more than uh, half the independents uh, Look, ran last time. And he to get, that's where they need to be. Look what happens in, in Florida. Right now, the most recent poll, DeSantis, Ron DeSantis, is down six points in the race for governor. And he has, uh, he has separated himself uh, from Trump. It looks like he wants to put distance between himself and, the, and, and President Trump. Uh, DeSantis did, uh, took, I thought, a bizarre posture. Uh, trying to argue with the president about his concern about the numbers uh, of fatalities uh, by Hurricane Maria. I mean, he actually he brought up intelligent, appropriate questions, and he was right to do so. Uh, Puerto Rico went through a tragedy. It would have been far worse if this president had not put uh, the military in there, FEMA in there for a longer period of time uh, than uh, for any other hurricane that I'm aware of. It, it was the story of... of Puerto Rico is the rebuilding that has occurred. You, you don't control the weather, you don't control hurricanes, uh, but you do control the cleanup. And the president has done an extraordinary job in, in, his, in his operation FEMA and elsewhere of going in there and rebuilding an island, rebuilding the electoral structure and everything else. That was, and the that was people bankrupt. of Puerto Rico have got to acknowledge that they have the most, I, I think, one of the most corrupt uh, state governments uh, and local governments in San Juan uh, of, of any part of this country. It, it is stunning what they've had to put up with in, in, their, in this tragedy. The, the people of uh, Puerto Rico have been taken advantage of, stockpiles of water, other supplies rotting, because their local government, their proximate government, could not deliver without uh, getting ensnared in its corruption and its incompetence. Well, the, the reality is the resources the president has put in there, though, is, is, is going to rebuild it somewhat. Uh, long term, it's already yeah, done so. It's 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 extraordinary. So, okay. Ed Rollins, Thank as you. always, good Thank to you. see you. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Okay. Be sure to vote in our poll tonight. The question is: Do you think Jeff Bezos is honest enough to tell the Washington Post to end their vicious smears and attacks on President Trump? Cast your vote on Twitter at Lou Dobbs. We'd like to hear from you. Follow me on Twitter at Lou Dobbs. Like me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram at Lou Dobbs tonight.
Up next, Paul Manafort makes a plea deal to work with a special counsel. But despite what you'll hear in the national left-wing media, the deal has nothing to do with President Trump or, what is that word? Collusion. We take it up right after the break. Fox legal analyst Greg Jarrett joins me next. Stay with us. Latest out of Carolinas, out of the Carolinas is Tropical Storm Florence is pummeling the region. Heavy winds, uh, rain. The uh, White House releasing this image just mon moments ago uh, showing President Trump, members of his cabinet receiving the emergency preparedness updates in the White House Situation Room. Former Trump campaign chief Paul Manafort pleading guilty to conspiracy and obstruction charges in a plea deal, agreeing to cooperate to some extent with special counsel Robert Mueller. Rudy Giuliani, counselor to the president, issued this statement saying, quote, once again, an investigation has concluded with a plea having nothing to do with President Trump or the Trump campaign. The reason? The president did nothing wrong. Joining us tonight, Greg Jarrett, Fox legal analyst, author of the New York Times bestseller, The Russia Hoax. Uh, Giuliani points out this has nothing to do with the president. Uh, the president did nothing wrong. And again, the special counsel is involved in something here that has nothing to do with his original charter. It goes on and on and on. I spoke to a source with direct knowledge of the plea negotiations, and he assured me it has nothing whatsoever to do with implicating Donald Trump, but rather it implicates two separate lobbying firms, one a Republican firm, one a Democrat firm with direct ties to Hillary Clinton. And that makes sense, because if you read today's superseding indictment filed about an hour before the plea deal uh, took place in court, it refers to Company A and Company B. And well, how... Well, Mueller, do you think, <laughs> is aware that this is a Democratic uh, operation that <laughs> oh, uh, he's, he's treading on friendly uh, territory? If he was going to go after Manafort, he had to go off after the business associates who were in on the deal to lobby for the Ukraine government. And according to the superseding indictment, both these firms um, were using a Brussels nonprofit as a cover in order to... You as don't a, say. I as, mean, a, as a conspiracy to defraud the government in not filing as foreign agents. And so those two so firms... Are, we, are, we, are you saying that we could see two lobbying firms in a lot of trouble? with yeah. the democratically led special counsel, or as the president puts it, uh, Bob Mueller's witch hunt and uh, the now, what, 17 Democratic acolytes? I believe that's the way I read the indictment, yes. But there's nothing in there to suggest, and my source tells me it has nothing whatsoever to do with Donald Trump, which dovetails with Rudy Giuliani's statement. Look, Manafort was so briefly involved in the campaign, his one job in his brief tenure was to secure the proper delegates for the convention. So it's always been dubious proposition that he was involved in some grand conspiracy with Vladimir Putin in the bowels of the Kremlin to influence the election. Well, I mean, we're we're sitting here now 20, what is it, 26 months into this uh, nonsense, these investigations first by just about a year by the FBI, now almost a year and a half by the uh, special counsel. Uh, we've got the Senate Intelligence Committee chairman, uh, Senator Richard Burr, acknowledging there's no evidence whatsoever. What in the hell does it take for these fools to say it's time to shut this down? Well, uh, I, I would hope that not only would they wind this down and shut it down, but that a special counsel and or grand jury is convened to investigate people like Comey McCabe, Peter Strzok, Lisa Page, the whole gang, including Rod Rosenstein, who continues to obstruct Congress. Well, let's these hope, are the people who need to be investigated. In my judgment, these well, are the, the pe people who committed crimes. Well, the, your opinion, everyone's opinion. The fact is that all of the texts reveal that they, that Strzok, that Page, uh, we, we can go through McCabe and Comey and the Department of Justice, Bruce Orr, the entire FBI leadership, the entire Department of Justice leadership are toxic. They're corrupt, politically corrupt. And they had and, and we're now after all of this time, we're looking at the investigators as the only corrupt enterprises involved in this entire mess.
not only was it a hoax to frame Trump, but then they were l leaking this false information and intelligence to damage Trump. The leaks came from the FBI, the Department of Justice, the CIA, and the DNI. All of them, the alphabet Let's soup of intelligence. Obama's intelligence community. That's right. James Obama's Comey's CIA. FBI. Yes. And uh, uh, James Clapper's DNI. Uh, John Brennan's CIA. These are the people who should be in front of a grand jury answering questions and yeah, facing... By the way, one thing you said, I've just got to say. No more special counsels. I know it's very popular for a lot of people to talk about another special... Give me a legitimate I, prosecutor. Yeah, give I'll me just a, take give me a, a grand jury. Give me a, a An honest yeah. prosecutor and a grand jury. That's what you need. No special counsel. I've had a belly full. Tell Lindsey Graham that, yeah, who's I, been saying we need another Lin special Senator counsel. Senator Graham, no more special counsels. <laughs> cool off. Greg, thanks so much. Good to see you. Appreciate it. Okay. One special counsel is more than we needed. Up next, Google's executives made no effort to hide their feelings following the 26th election. They were not bias-free, it turns out. For what it's worth, um, I've been a very long time Hillary supporter. I kind of always imagine my first time up here and people ask to be good news around Google Geist or something, but here we are. It's not just a challenge for America. It's a challenge that goes well beyond America. Really? Wow. Well beyond America. Check. That meeting, that Google meeting, has caught the attention of Republican lawmakers. They're not pleased. We'll have much more on that next. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Google, Google, Google. Google's 2016 election postmortem took a dark turn during a Q&A portion of an all-hands meeting. Is there anything positive you see from this election result? <laughs> Oof. Uh, boy, that's, that's a really tough one right now. I don't know what's going to happen, but there's a chance it could be bad. It could be really bad. History teaches us that there are periods of populism, of, of nationalism. That's why we have to work so hard to make sure it doesn't turn into a world war or something catastrophic. I think it's worth really worrying about. Those are supposed to be smart people. Uh, they are frightening people, frankly. House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy now says it's time for that technology giant to come clean and to head to Washington for a public hearing. McCarthy said the prospect of Google executives using their personal left-wing biases and beliefs to control the content their users see is disturbing, deeply troubling, and that Google needs to start demonstrating transparency. In my opinion, that's only an opening salvo as to what they need to do. Joining us tonight is Andrew McCarthy, former assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, National Review contributing editor and Fox Business contributor. Andy, good to see you. Uh, this, is, uh, this is stunning stuff to me. Uh, Google uh, and it's, uh, it's just the, uh, the sensitivity levels of that uh, group of top executives decrying, lamenting the, the loss of the presidency uh, and how heartfelt they were about uh, their obviously favored candidate, Hillary Clinton. Uh, your reaction? Well, I don't, I don't begrudge them their left-wing politics. What I resent is that they appear to use it in operating their platform. I know they say they don't. And, you know, it's a free country. They're not the government. They're a, they're a private business. They can run it the way they wish to run it. Do you I think wish they, they were can. a viable con Do you think conservative alternative. Because it seems well, to me, going to your point, think, this is a left-wing business uh, run by left-wing executives who are stifling fair comment from uh, conservatives uh, as if they had no rights whatsoever, at least second-class rights, uh, and uh, are supplanted by the rights of the left. Yeah, well, I don't think you have uh, I don't think you have rights that are enforceable on a private platform. Mm -hmm. And I think the problem, Lou, with a with a situation like this is that, you know, if if they're all left wingers and the ethos of the place is that they really suppress uh, even conservative ideas from from intruding into their way of thinking, they in some sense don't even realize how 
out and literally out in left field they are. Uh, I like the expression left field uh, without question they are. But at the same time, we're talking about stifling voices and uh, unfairly. Uh, it, it's a, as you say, it's a private platform. Uh, but the last I looked, you know, AT&T is a private company, but it's regulated, isn't it? Well, yeah, and I, I guess if we had to recreate the wheel, we probably wouldn't like the regulatory structure that they're encumbered in. And I think the problem you have when you get into these government regulation situations is by the time they regulate, the technology is generations mm -hmm. ahead of, of the, the sort of static, what moribund regulatory What if I said to you that I, that's, a, that's, a, that's a historical jacket. gamble I'll take? Uh, I think it's far more important to ensure uh, fairness, uh, level playing fields in the public square, whether it is dominated by uh, private companies or whether it is uh, a, a matter of simply of government rights to its citizens. This is this is onerous what we are yeah. watching, whether it is Facebook, whether it is Twitter, whether it is Google. There is a um, there is uh, around this a concentration of economic and technological power that is suffocating uh, right wing voices, conservative voices. Without exception, yeah, well, I don't think they should. And I think, yeah, but I, I don't think they should. But I don't think they become the public square and therefore a public asset because they've been fabulously successful. I think it's on us to come up with a better alternative. You do. And why is it that we haven't? I do. And why is it we haven't? That's because, a, th because that's I think a, what a question for a questions for for guys who know a lot more about how yeah. capital works in this country like you than like me. I'm just a, you know yeah. me. I'm just a lawyer from the Bronx. What do I know? The, the question of capital becomes, frankly, one of concentration of capital. And there is very little appetite uh, for comp uh, competition. You're looking at Google that owns uh, what is it? Ninety, probably ninety three percent of search. Uh, it is going to be very difficult to mount a capital uh, competition uh, that would be of uh, a sufficient scale uh, to, to have a remote chance of being effective. Look at Bing, for crying out loud, uh, supported with a Microsoft uh, a platform. It's still incapable uh, of moving ahead. Uh, it is a question. It's a large question, but it can't be simply dismissed because sometimes in economic history, we overcome these kinds of extraordinary uh, economic concentration, the political power, economic power. In fact, our history is replete with examples of where regulation was the only solution. Well, it, it, I guess that it, that's one way of looking at it. The way mm -hmm. I look at it is if, if right-wing voices were being suppressed, uh, as, as much as you suggest, I don't see how Trump would be president. So I, I do think that there's a vibrant right wing news and opinion community and that, you know, sometimes technology takes care of these things. And I, I just am as resistant to this kind of regulation as you are to special counsels, if I heard you right before the break. You couldn't possibly be as resistant as I am to special counsels. Uh, this, is a, this is a lesson <laughs> that I hope that every damn gum fool in the country in the legal profession has learned, uh, that this is not the solution. Uh, grand juries and uh, pr an appropriate prosecution is. Uh, let's go to that issue. We're, we're getting more information. Do we have that full screen right now on what has come out, uh, the latest on Strzok and Page? Uh, if we could put that up, I'd like uh, the audience to be able to see that. Do we have that? Here it is. Uh, this, uh, this is, uh, it will make your head spin to realize how many stories we played a personal role in. Uh, this is uh, an incredible uh, text that has just come out, uh, and this with uh, Lisa Page and Peter Strzok showing how much uh, they were aware. Uh, this from Lisa Page on December 19th of 2016. She says, sheesh, this has been quite a year, forwarding a link to the Times' most read stories of 2016. Do you think we're going to hear from Peter Strzok's attorney trying to explain that they were talking about stopping leaks rather than pushing leaks? Well, I, I imagine that's his story, and he's going to stick with it uh, un, until he moves on to something else. You know, I, I think, Lou, that there is 
because based on my own experience, I know there is uh, occasional cases where you have to have an anti-leak strategy because you have a leak problem, but you're ill put to make that kind of a case when your fingerprints are all over every leak in town. And I think the problem these guys have is that the leaking in this particular investigation was coming from the higher, the upper hierarchy of the FBI. And this certainly isn't a situation where these guys can speak as people who were yeah. trying to stand as examples against press leaking, quite the opposite. Would you say that they look guilty as hell of leaking and setting up uh, these uh, surveillances? Well, you know, look, I, I think if you're if you're looking at it as a comprehensive case, we know there was a ton of leaking and we know that they're talking about leaking at the same time the ton of leaking is going on and they're quite happy about it. Looks like a pretty strong case to me. Me too. Andy McCarthy, thanks for being with us as always. Great to have you with us. Appreciate it. Thanks, Lou. Andrew McCarthy. One person killed, 20 injured after a series of gas explosions outside Boston, several communities. Massachusetts State Police confirmed fires, explosions, gas, odors, 70 locations at the peak. 18 of those fires were burning at the same time. Uh, all of uh, the surrounding townships sending uh, first responders, fire departments, uh, and medics to the scene. Up next, Bob Woodward and the anonymous New York Times op-ed writer apparently don't have a prayer of turning evangelicals against this president, Pastor Robert Jeffress joins me next. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Your insurance rates skyrocket after a scratch so small you could fix it with a pen. How about using that pen to sign up for new insurance instead? For drivers with accident forgiveness, liberty. Joining us now is Robert Jeffress, pastor of the First Baptist Church of Dallas, Fox Business contributor, and author of the new book, Choosing the Extraordinary Life, God's Seven Secrets for Success and Significance, available for pre-order now, and we commend it to you mightily. Uh, great to have you with us, Pastor. Uh, we're watching, we're, you know, it's, it's interesting to watch the coordination here. Uh, suddenly there's a yeah. uh, anonymous op-ed that appears in the New York Times. Suddenly there's a uh, Woodward book uh, making all sorts of allegations. Uh, and the attacks on the Trump presidency go on and on and on. I don't see anything accidental in the timing or the, uh, the orchestration, do you? Not at all, Lou. And let me say a word about the Woodward book, because I just finished it last night to prepare for our interview tonight. And uh, look, uh, uh, I know that uh, President Trump's staff has spent more time with him than I have, but I've spent more time with him than Bob Woodward has. And the Bob Woodward portrayal of Donald Trump is complete fiction. I think your listeners would be interested to know, I've just happened to be with President Trump on three very stress-filled days. I was with him on election day day in Trump Tower. I was seated next to him during his first TV interview after Hollywood accessed. I just happened to be in his office the day after the FBI raid on Michael Cohen's office. And at no time was he ever unhinged. He was thoughtful. He was focused. He was deliberative. That's the President Trump I know. And here's the bottom line, Lou. Mm -hmm. You don't become a billionaire and president of the United States by being an idiot. To pull off what President Trump has accomplished in the last three years takes great leadership and near genius IQ. That's what Bob Woodward and the media elite are missing. Yeah, it, well, they're not just missing it. They're purposely missing it because the, yeah, the story right. of what he has done in the course, and I'm saying to this very day, from the moment he stepped into the presidency on January 20th, uh, he, 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 almost two years ago uh, soon, uh, I mean, it's an extraordinary story, uh, what he's accomplished, what he's achieved. Uh, he's done so, by the way, as you and I and a lot of other people know, with good humor, great personal strength. <laughs> That's right. uh, that, by the way, I don't think the most uh, people, if you put a dozen of them together, could match his energy, his strength, uh, and his command uh, of all that is around him as president of the United States. It's extraordinary. 
Listen, every time I have been with him during one of those high stress times, Lou, I've walked away saying, this is the kind of leader you want running the country. Yeah, it's I the results he's producing as well. And you know, I've spent the last two weeks touring with my book and everywhere I go, I find that his supporters are more enthusiastic yeah. today than they were two years ago because he's delivering on his promises. I, I and I just tell it. people the truth. I yeah, don't doubt it for it, a minute. And absolutely. Pastor, I think we ought to give uh, Bob Woodward credit for one thing. Uh, he did <laughs> acknowledge at least uh, that the Steele dossier, the fictional uh, Trump dossier that the uh, DNC and, Pres and, uh, <laughs> and Secretary of State uh, Clinton uh, paid for uh, is pure garbage. So uh, we, we, you, you can hold that close uh, when you think of uh, Bob Woodward. Pastor Jeff, he's great a to good see writer, you. but he's come up with the wrong conclusion. That's the problem. Yeah, well, that's one of them. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Pastor. Appreciate it. Up next, Thanks. new texts on Earth tonight between disgraced FBI agents Strzok and Page. We'll take it up when we come back. Stay with us.